And now we begin the eighth canto, chapter one, the Manus, administrators of the universe. it said O my Lord my spiritual master now I have fully heard from your grace about the dynasty of Svayambhuva Manu but there are also other Manus and I want to hear about their dynasties kindly describe them to us O learned Brahman Shukdev Goswami the great learned persons who are completely intelligent Describe the activities and appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead during the various Manvan eager to hear about these narrations. Kindly describe them. O learned Brahman, kindly describe to us whatever activities the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who created this cosmic manifestation, has performed in the past Manvantadas, is performing at present, and will perform in the future Manvantadas. Shukdev Goswami said, In the present Kalpa, there have already been six Manus. I have described to you Svayambhuva Manu and the appearance of many demigods. In this Kalpa of Brahma, Svayambhuva is the first Manu. Svayambhuva Manu had two daughters named Akuti and Devuhuti. From their wombs, the Supreme Personality of Godhead appeared as two sons named Yagyamurti and Kapila, respectively. These sons were entrusted with preaching about religion and knowledge. O best of the Kurus, I have already described in the third canto the activities of Kapila, the son of Devahuti. Now I shall describe the activities of Yagyapati, the son of Akuti. Svayambhuva Manu, the husband of Shatarupa, was by nature not at all attached to enjoyment of the senses. Thus he gave up his kingdom of sense enjoyment and entered the forest with his wife to practice austerities. O Sion of Bharat, after Svayambhuva Manu had thus entered the forest with his wife, he stood on one leg on the bank of the river Sunanda, and in this way, with only one leg touching the earth, he performed great austerities for one hundred years. While performing these austerities, he spoke as follows. Lord Manu said, The Supreme Living Being has created this material world of animation. It is not that he was created by this material world. When everything is silent, the Supreme Being stays awake as a witness. The living entity does not know him, but he knows everything. Within this universe, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in his super-soul feature, is present everywhere, wherever there are animate or inanimate beings. Therefore, one should accept only that which is allotted to him. One should not desire to infringe upon the property of others. Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead constantly watches the activities of the world, no one sees Him. However, one should not think that because no one sees Him, He does not see, for His power to see is never diminished. Therefore, everyone should worship the Super Soul, who always stays with the individual soul as a friend. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no beginning, no end, and no middle. Nor does he belong to a particular person or nation. He has no inside or outside. The dualities found within this material world, 
such as beginning and end, mine and theirs, are all absent from the personality of the Supreme Lord. The universe, which emanates from Him, is another feature of the Lord. Therefore, the Supreme Lord is the ultimate truth, and He is complete in greatness. The entire cosmic manifestation is the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, who has millions of names and unlimited potencies. He is self-effulgent, unborn, and changeless. He is the beginning of everything, but He has no beginning. Because He has created this cosmic manifestation by His external energy, the universe appears to be created, maintained, and annihilated by Him. Nonetheless, He remains inactive in His spiritual energy and is untouched by the activities of the material energy. Therefore, to enable people to reach the stage of activities that are not tinged by fruitive results, great saints first engage people in fruitive activities, for unless one begins by performing activities as recommended in the Shastras, one cannot reach the stage of liberation or activities that produce no reactions. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is full in opulence by His own gain, yet He acts as the Creator, Maintainer, and Annihilator of this material world. In spite of acting in that way, He is never entangled. Hence devotees who follow in His footsteps are also never entangled. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, works just like an ordinary human being, yet He does not desire to enjoy the fruits of work. He is full in knowledge, free from material desires and diversions, and completely independent. As the Supreme Teacher of human society, He teaches His own way of activities, and thus He inaugurates the real path of religion. I request everyone to follow him. Shukdev Goswami continued. Svayambhuva Manu was thus in a trance, chanting the mantras of Vedic instruction known as the Upanishads. Upon seeing him, the Rakshasas and Asuras, being very hungry, wanted to devour him. Therefore they ran after him with great speed. The Supreme Lord, Vishnu, who sits in everyone's heart, appearing as Yagyapati, observed that the Rakshasas and demons were going to devour Svayambhuva Manu. Thus the Lord, accompanied by his sons, named the Yamas, and by all the other demigods, killed the demons and rakshasas. He then took the post of Indra and began to rule the heavenly kingdom. The son of Agni, named Svarochisha, became the second Manu. His several sons were headed by Dumat, Sushena, and Rochishmat. During the reign of Svarochisha, the post of Indra was assumed by Rochana, the son of Yagya. Tushita and others became the principal demigods, and Urja, Stamba, and others became the seven saints. All of them were faithful devotees of the Lord. Vedashira was a very celebrated rishi. From the womb of his wife, whose name was Tushita, came the avatar named Vibhu. Vibhu remained a brahmachari and never married throughout his life. From him, 88,000 other saintly persons took lessons on self-control, austerity, and similar behavior. O king, the third Manu, Uttama, was the son of King Priyavrata. Among the sons of this Manu were Pavana, Srinjaya, and Yagyahotra. During the reign of the third Manu, Pramada and other sons of Vashishta became the seven sages. The Satyas, Vedashrutas, and Bhadras 
became demigods, and Satyajit was selected to be Indra, the king of heaven. In this Manvantara, the Supreme Personality of Godhead appeared from the womb of Sunrita, who was the wife of Dharma, the demigod in charge of religion. The Lord was celebrated as Satyasena, and he appeared with other demigods known as the Satyavratas. Satyasena, along with his friend Satyajit, who was the king of heaven, Indra, killed all the untruthful, impious, and misbehaved yakshas, rakshasas, and ghostly living entities who gave pains to other living beings. The brother of the third Manu, Uttama, was celebrated by the name Tamasa, and he became the fourth Manu. Tamasa had ten sons headed by Prithu, Kyati, Nara, and Ketu. During the reign of Tamasa Manu, among the demigods were the Satyakas, Haris, and Viras. The heavenly king, Indra, was Trishika. The sages in Saptarshi Dham were headed by Jyotir Dham. O king, in the Tamasa Manvantara, the sons of Vidriti, who were known as the Vaidritis, also became demigods. Since in course of time the Vedic authority was lost, these demigods, by their own powers, protected the Vedic authority. Also in this Manvantara, the Supreme Lord, Vishnu, took birth from the womb of Harini, the wife of Harimeda, and he was known as Hari. Hari saved his devotee, Gajendra, the king of the elephants, from the mouth of a crocodile. King Parikshit said, My Lord, Bhadarayani, we wish to hear from you in detail how the king of the elephants, when attacked by a crocodile, was delivered by Hari. Any literature or narration in which the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Uddhama Shloka, is described and glorified is certainly great, pure, glorious, auspicious, and all good. Sri Sutta Goswami said, O Brahmins, when Parikshit Maharaj, who was awaiting impending death, thus requested Shukdev Goswami to speak, Shukdev Goswami, encouraged by the king's words, offered respect to the king and spoke with great pleasure in the assembly of sages who desired to hear him. Thus ends the first chapter of the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Manus Administrators of the Universe.